So, newsarms.com. What's up? GHRP2. Well, here's the thing is we just brought this into the repertoire of products on newsarms.com because of the potential that it has and because there is really a big need for it among y'all. What, ha what happened was, see what happened was this MK677. It is absolutely amazing stuff. The problem with 677 is the diabetic doesn't need to take it. So to find a way around that so that all you fish, frog, monkey, mice, saber tooth, spider, cricket, like a lot of pussies out there that have diabetes, I found something that would um, perhaps help. And this is why we do research. Because um, <clears throat> none of these products are for human consumption. They are not to be ingested. They're not to be eaten. They're not to be snorted. They're not to be banged. They're not to be plugged. They're not to be insulted. They are not for your mother-in-law. And honestly, they can only be used under a medical practitioner's care. Because Lord knows we're not smart enough to do this stuff. GHRP, Growth Hormone Releasing Peptide. Basically, this one right here is a very short-acting growth hormone releaser in the same fashion that, let's say, MK677 is a 30-hour releaser of growth hormone that greatly increases the amount of growth hormone produced by the pituitary by mimicking ghrelin, ghrelin being the hunger hormone. Well. If we want to get to how this is going to benefit everyone, or everyone's research, GHRP2 is going to decrease cellulite, decrease body fat, cholesterol, it's going to improve mood, memory, energy, muscle, uh, better skin tone, focus, blood pressure. All these are the benefits of this that they have found in studies. Not me saying it, studies. So the problem comes in with growth hormones. The stronger of your growth hormone releasers is your um, MK677. The problem with MK677 for the diabetic is when the pituitary releases growth hormone, right? It competes with insulin for a receptor. Well, this will cause the diabetics A1C and blood sugar levels to go and we don't really need diabetic comas because those are bad for um, research animals from what I hear. The way that God set it up, because um, he's pretty sharp, like he's got this whole thing figured out and for all those who say that there's not a God, then tell me exactly why I don't understand how my own body works. If evolution were true, I would understand all this innately. My body would not be created without giving me the knowledge to repair everything in it if evolution worked. See, it doesn't make sense, does it? See, there has to be a creator to put this together because this didn't fall together. Not in your wildest imagination. So, the way that God set this up is whenever the hunger hormone, ghrelin, is released, and it's released when your stomach growls, that's why it's called ghrelin, I would imagine, but when fasting, there's no insulin, right? There's no need in producing insulin whenever you have an empty stomach. There's no blood sugar, there's no need. So what happens is at that point when the stomach growls, that triggers the release of what? Growth hormone. That's why we have growth hormone releasing peptides and MK677 that mimic ghrelin to cause you to release growth hormone. The danger in doing something of that nature or your side effects would be if you do this and you are insulin resistant already, 
that means very few of these receptors are accepting insulin, then what's going to happen is when you shoot growth hormone up, it's going to, boom, hit the receptor. What's insulin going to do? Well, God set it up so there ain't no insulin when growth hormone is released. That's why you only release growth hormone when your stomach growls or you only release it in great amounts when the stomach growls or when you're in stage four sleep, meaning you've been asleep for a grip. So what we want to do though is with diabetics, well, they went so long without being hungry that they didn't produce the growth hormone necessary to regulate the other hormones to help their body to rebuild the pancreas or the pancreatic function because hormones do that. When you go a long time without having the ability to rebuild the glands that produce the hormones, well, they degenerate. That's where diabetes comes from. If one wanted to reverse diabetes, it could be hypothesized that if you increase growth hormone levels while fasting, this would be the contractors that are going to tell the cells to take the raw materials to rebuild your pancreas. Does that make sense? So here's what we want to do. If I were diabetic, or if my research animal were a diabetic research animal, I would want to use something like GHRP to increase growth hormone to help my body to repair. But it would have to be the fast-acting GHRP2 so that I didn't overwhelm the system for 30 hours because, let's face it, you're probably not going to fast for 30 hours and do this every day. Well, it would be hard to fast 30 hours every day anyway. So, <laughs> nonetheless, not only to rebuild from being diabetic, but to also build muscle and get your growth hormone so your body can balance. And growth hormones really, it is an anabolic hormone. It is not the end all be all. Insulin is your most anabolic hormone. So if we're ever going to produce more, then we gotta get growth hormone to help rebuild the pancreatic function. Now, or you can just use it for muscle mass in general in your research animal. The way that works is growth hormone, being a master hormone, regulating all other hormones, helps every other hormone in the body to work properly. This is why your bodybuilders love growth hormone, is because it, is, it gives their body what it needs to help their steroids to work properly. And that way you don't get as much side effects, even with really massively high dosages. Now, if you dose growth hormone in really huge amounts, yes, you will get an anabolic effect. But my God, that's a lot of money. So growth hormone runs about $1,000 for a month supply if you're using it in bodybuilding doses at a minimum. And like, I don't know about you, but that's just... Well, a bit ridiculous. So, to do something like GHRP2, it's going to give the benefits of the growth hormone for short periods of time. Now, growth hormone is a master hormone that not only increases muscle mass, decreases body fat, regulates the endocrine system, but growth hormone also will cause your skin to get better, your focus and concentration to get better, your blood pressure to normalize, cholesterol to normalize. Now, GHRP2 being a piece of the growth hormone or activating a part of growth hormone. Now, growth hormone's 191 amino acid peptide chain amino acid chain peptide which basically means we got a lot of opportunity to screw this up with ghrp2 being a ghrelin mimic it for it facilitates 
certain aspects that you would get with, let's say, MK677 and growth hormone. So what it's going to do is we know, this, we know from studies that it will increase your growth hormone and it's going to increase appetite. This is going to help someone who is needing to gain weight. A diabetic on insulin will many times lose a lot of weight. Now, you have to provide the raw material necessary to rebuild if you're going to build muscle while on, it, while on insulin. And this might actually help to rebuild some pancreatic function if you're type one or type one diabetic and haven't yet reached weight. If you're type two diabetic and have not yet reached that insulin dependent point or you're pre-diabetic, this would be a much better route to go being very short acting than would be your MK677. This, 30 hours. This, on the other hand, is going to be two to four hours, so it's a faster release. Now, once you've got that, you can start to understand how it can help. Now, the problem that I really didn't like with GHRP2 is I don't like having to inject my research animal. He really doesn't appreciate me stabbing him with these little needles all the time. So he told me that I had to find another way to do this if I was going to do research on him anymore. So what we have is we have come up with the kind of spray of the nasal, which is not for human consumption. Um, humans should never take that. But in a research animal, he can snort this, and this is going to give him 85% absorption rate in comparison to injection, which is 100% absorption rate. Now, the thing is, is this is actually even a little faster than would be the subcutaneous injection. Fat releases hormones very slowly, releases everything very slowly because there's not a lot of blood flow. Well, when you snort something, it kind of releases a little more quickly. And that's what we're gonna have here is in a nasal spray for your research animal only or by your doctor's permission, you're going to have a fast release, growth hormone releasing peptide to increase appetite and growth hormone levels to aid in rebuilding the muscle to help with cellulite, body fat, cholesterol, mood, memory, energy, muscle, better skin tone, focus, and can be taken for long periods of time. So that you can find on newsarms.com. We just have all these peptides that have just come out for um, your research purposes. So, hey, y'all check it out. And if you have any questions about that, my email address, S-E-T-H-N-H-C at ATT.net, and I will get back with you as quickly as humanly possible. We're going to go over all these peptides one at a time. So, um, anyway, y'all be good or be good at it. Peace.